Between Ourselves, Part 6 Ephraim's Dream I had a dream last night. It was about alcohol. It was about me. And it was about the madman. I was living with my old girlfriend somewhere in London. I dreamt that I awoke with a terrible hangover and all I could remember were various snapshots of the night before. When one drinks too much as I do, blackouts occur and on the following day the only memories of the night before are snapshots. It's as if somebody handed you three photographs and said that was you yesterday. Just images, no sound. In the dream my snapshots were of me opening a can of Guinness, talking to my uncle Frank and slamming my fist on a table. In the dream I got out of bed and I went down the stairs to the kitchen and in the kitchen I was horrified to see that my uncle Frank was indeed here with me in London as was my mother, my sister and my aunt. They were all preparing tea. I realized that they had arrived the day before as I could now see some more snapshots of my mother and my sister. But why were they here? Why were they in London? It turned out that my girlfriend of that time, Selina, had left me because of my drinking. She had moved away without telling me where, because she did not want me to follow her. But because she still had some feelings for me, she had informed my family of the situation and she had told them that she was very concerned about my health and of what would become of me if someone did not intervene in my life. Uh, my apparent split personality and alcohol abuse were the cause of the trouble. Selina said that at the beginning these things were hardly noticeable, but in the three years that she had been with me things had deteriorated, slowly at first and then faster over the last few months. She could no longer stand it and moved away. My family had come to take me home and get me help for my mental state. As they took turns speaking to me in the kitchen over breakfast, I could not look any of them in the eye. And it was on this note, and trying to remember the previous night's drunkenness, that I awoke from my dream. This dream reminds me how I must be on my guard always and not fall again. I cannot get drunk again. What do I do now? Now we wait, Chief. We wait. Let them win, Chief. You know, sometimes you need to lose on the small things so that you can win on the big. Do you know what I mean, Chief? It was a bad weekend. I came into work drunk Saturday night. Gerald, my wife's brother, and Elaine, his girlfriend, were visiting us. I managed to function all right. It was a busy night. I even drank some more after the last customers left. Eventually, I was left alone. Left alone in a bar. I listened to some music and then I went for a walk around the town. Around Bannon. I think it may have been four, three, I have, no, I have no idea what the time was exactly, perhaps four. And I think I may have fallen down, but I can't really remember that either. Gerald and Elaine had left earlier that evening, and when I eventually came home my wife was not in bed. She was actually hiding somewhere else in the house. She was hiding and sleeping so as to avoid my ranting and raving. I feel so bad today, so guilty with the thought of the psychological damage that I know I am inflicting on my wife. I have now decided to try and stop drinking completely for as long as possible. I desperately need equilibrium. No more escaping into unreal happiness in the high country. The Overlords the overlord scanned the length and breadth of it. They put the plan together. It was time to pull him out. The wires of the mind were all meshed together. The long battle to stay in the circle of inspiration and the great battle to overcome the bad enemy, the negative energy, had taken their toll. Now the great surrendering had begun. No more seeking the wonderful, the high, no. Now, a simple kind of contentment would suffice.
the 11th of August, Tuesday, 5 p.m. My chest feels as if it is in the grip of some invisible fist. Who will come to face me today? What will try and break my stability today? What thought will torture me today? I must drive this big plane out of this storm and through this heavy turbulence to clear skies. The evil one tries to scatter my peace of mind. The evil cloud. The evil fisherman trying to get me to bite on the hook. And before I know it, the black circles of thought are flowing through my mind. It is the sixth day of cleaning for me. Although my wife and I did drink a bottle of rosé last night as we watched the movie Once Upon a Time in the West. I love that movie. It is the beginning of the night and I'm looking to myself for some kind of strength. What small thought can I use to lift myself out of this constricted feeling in my chest? I remember drinking coffee from a plastic cup in the loading bay during the time when I was a security guard in London. How peaceful it was standing there with coffee in one hand and a cigarette in the other during the dead of the night with no people in a ten-mile radius. I worked in the centre of London. I remember watching the twilight flickering through the darkness. The early bird singing, the cool morning breeze and the empty streets outside. The place where I worked was very busy during the day but at night all the buildings emptied and the place felt quite deserted. It felt good walking around the emptiness and stillness of the building. I also enjoyed the trip home on the tube at 7 a.m. as I watched all the other commuters going to work while I was going home to my wife and the most peaceful asleep. I worked from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Six days of cleaning and I am hoping for no more mornings of no memory and no more terrible depression caused by what I may have said or done the night before. I remember standing in the garden as a child. The street lights shone over a tall hedge onto our garden, and if you stood in the right place, you could not be seen by a person standing a few feet in front of you, but you could see them. I lived in a small town in Ireland, and I remembered one Christmas at 10 p.m. as I was standing there quietly in the blind spot looking at my brother who was feeding the dog. I could see him but he could not see me. I heard my mother's voice calling us both in for supper. I remember feeling very clear and untangled inside, like clear water running in a stream. I remember the smell on summer nights, the smell of the mowed grass, the smell of the evergreen trees, and the clear starry sky and the odd light in one or two of the houses on the road, but hardly a sound, except for the breeze through the trees. Nowadays I rarely feel that sense of tranquility. It is Monday, it is 4 p.m., and I am in the Red Raven. It is the 21st of September, and today is cold. I have just finished serving a table of four and I'm waiting for them to finish up and leave. I want to be a blank canvas today, an experiment in time. That's what I'd like to be. If only I didn't snap back into this persona at the first sign of another person, my snap personality, the one that I have developed to deal with the world. I don't like this automatic me. I am drinking my second pint of Guinness, but I am aware I need to be very careful and not get carried away. I must be on my guard, as it was only a few days ago that I drank two bottles of rosé wine and ended up falling down on the empty streets of Bannon during some early hours, perhaps two, perhaps three. How could I do such a stupid thing? I wish I could find that feeling of total freedom without the need to drink. My willpower seems to disappear after three pints.
It is now 7 p.m. and I have just finished my second pint. I feel a bit more relaxed now and my thinking is clearer somehow. However, I am aware that there is a very thin line between being merry and being out of it. Right now I feel that I have become my own protector. I look after myself in all ways. This is after a few drinks, of course, but not lots. Who is the fucking idiot who thinks more and more is better when time and time again it has been proven that too much alcohol is not good for me? Can it be that my will is to blame, or is it looking at the bigger picture? No. No, it is just stupid. I think about things and realize that freedom of thought and action are so important that in order to achieve them I... I neglect my well-being. How can I possibly think that I am free when it is obvious that I am a prisoner of this artificial high? I guess now that I have finished my second pint, someone thinks that they have found the cure for all my woes, yeah. Just get drunk and everything will be fine. But I know it's a dead-end street. I wish it wasn't. I wish I could drink and drink and be happy and have a happy evening and go to bed and wake up the next day without a care. But I know that this is not the way the evening will pan out, not for me. I only have a problem if I allow myself to be anything less than totally free. That would be a problem. So I have decided to drink, to drink pint number three. I will be blank. I don't know this me. I will give up the old tired negative stuff in my head. I will change my mind. Ah, the beginning. I can feel the beginning of the Christmas peace. It approaches from afar. I'm well known on that level for the work I did all those Christmases ago on that calm, still night. I caused many happy calls to be made that night. We have decided to call our restaurant the Red Raven. It is Tuesday, the 22nd of September and I am in the Red Raven. The minutes passed slowly and he didn't know the task he was embarking on in this small town. What was he to do here? What job had they planned for him? He knew he had something to do here, that's why they sent him, but what? It was difficult here. The air was filled with a certain tension. He wondered, was it just here? Or was the air everywhere filled with a certain tension, a certain angst? Did everybody suffer from a certain angst, or was it just him? Was real freedom an illusion? Not the external freedom, but the freedom of the inner domain. He remembered a dream from the previous night. He couldn't remember what exactly, but he had to wake up while still dreaming. And he dreamt he awoke in an earlier childhood time. He said to himself in the dream, you need to go back a level to continue, because there are many levels of consciousness. It was a relaxing dream, and he was very engaged with the idea of going back a level while still dreaming. It is Tuesday, 22nd September, and it's 10 in p.m. Today the bar was very busy. I tried my hand at some cooking for the first time, but I fell apart at dessert. I must remain detached. No drinking today. No connection with the object. I must remain a blank canvas. A medium. I must remain outside it. See the scene from all around. From all the angles. Where are the camera? Where are the actors? Where are the commentators? Ah, I see the actors. I must empty my thoughts now and get ready to read my lines, study my part. All I have to do is say my lines with confidence. I can play my part in many ways. Each day has its spheres, its mental adventures, its ups and downs. I'm not one to vouch for being active all the time. I prefer contemplation, but I did enjoy my walk in the countryside yesterday. I guess... I guess... When walking one is active and contemplative at the same time, I remember a breakthrough in my thinking some years ago. I convinced myself to be content 
in the place in which I was, and not wish for the next thing. And I experienced a sort of deep time. There was no more running after something or away from something. I said to myself, this is where you are, and it would make no difference to be someplace else. You take you with you. Everywhere you go, there is no getting away from you. So here I am today in my bar, in the Red Raven. The thing continues. Where will we go tonight? What will I bring to it? What will it bring to me? Why don't you leave yourself alone? Why don't you drop the mental mess? Have no annoying thoughts. Tell them to depart as they do you no good. Tell them you have respectfully resigned from the thing. And from now on you only allow yourself to play the game. You have a specialist interest in the field. You know we do our best. My mood drops and I try to remember my breakthrough in the past, but it is difficult to remember a state of mind. It is Wednesday, 9 p.m., and I am in the Red Raven. Today went pretty quick. We had a few customers this morning and some deliveries. Seven days now of sobriety, but this is the tricky time as temptation can come along. And before I know it, I am on pint number four without quite knowing how I got there. One day at a time, surely. It is 10 p.m., I thought we would have an early night, but four guys have arrived for a late drink. Moments like this are testing, but they are also a great opportunity to test my mettle. All the stuff I've been talking about, no connections, no judgments, no willing, no relating, no projecting, hiding, all these things can now be put to the test. It would be something to create a certain freedom in this environment. Freedom where the inner oil starts to flow and a new character comes through. No stress, no cares. Nowhere else. But the pull to act in the usual manner. The snap of the usual persona. The way the mask flicks on like a light. It is very difficult to change the program and be something else. Something you actually want to be. A flowing feeling of freedom inside. How about that? No projecting shit onto the others. It's 11 p.m. now and I am drinking my third pint. But I will stop after this as I do not want to get too high at this late hour. I wish the four guys would hurry up and leave. I would tell them to hurry up and leave, but my wife insists that that's not the way it is done in the south of France. And as we are a new business, we cannot afford any bad publicity. So we wait and I have another pint. I feel the shift in consciousness and the voices around me sound like they did in the old days. I feel like I'm in a bar but as a client, not the owner. This night is mine. It is nice to be in control. But I guess I will lose that if I continue drinking. I must be careful. Midnight is approaching fast. Can I remain in control? My wife has decided to call time, and the bar is now empty, and we are about to leave. It is Thursday, the 24th of September at 3 p.m. I was lucky yesterday. I could have gone on drinking and kept my wife awake till 6 a.m., but I managed to stop, and just in time. I didn't sleep well last night, and I have some memory loss from yesterday evening. I was on the verge at midnight. I could have lost it. A dangerous place for me to be. I could have become the madman, Harry. That's the way Harry sneaks up on me. That's the way Harry takes me over. I could have lost my head so easily. I guess there was no big incident and my wife was in good form the next day, but it reminds me of how careful I need to be.